In this video, we will look at uh, physics control for skeletal meshes. So, those stunts you see here. And we will start with the example we seen yesterday. So, it's the Walker example. It's a uh, it's actually a ragdoll that is controlled by uh, physics controls. So it looks like a normal uh, skeletal mesh animated, but it also can interact with the environment. And if you look here, as you remember, it only uses world space controls. So as you remember, there is two set of controls created here. One is world space and one is parent space. And this example only enables the world space uh, controls. So which is uh, what it does, it will, if we play it again, you can see those lines they pulling the the physics bodies composing this mesh those capsules and rectangles to their to the to the location that is uh, that is defined by the animation and if we now take this cube put it here we can see those like strings pulling it to the to the desired pose but of course it cannot go because because there's the cube physical obstacle that uh, stops the physical bodies to to go there and we can also check take this character and like shake him a little bit all those things it's not really easy to see but i probably cannot do it really in this example but i'll show it later uh so uh let's just look a little bit at those other parameters here and why we do them so first of all we have a gravity multiplier set to zero and this is to simply because if we set it to something else like by default is one it will be it will add an additional force to those to this ragdoll so it will be go down like it will be pulled down a little bit well here we don't really see it because uh, it's actually not enough i suppose but if we put something like a little bit more so you see let's pull it down so i suppose it's done for this now the feet are set to kinematic in almost all examples and this is simply as i understand because otherwise the collision or the feet will uh, collide with the floor and make this so if you look at the collision you see that the the collision of the feet is implemented by this rectangle and it's touching the floor so to prevent this effect the foot are set to kinematic now as you as you seen uh, we only uh, use the uh, world space controls those you know like like springs that uh, pull the character towards the desired location pull each physics body composing the character 
its location and rotation to the uh, uh, to the position and rotation defined by the animation. But we also can try for fun to uh, enable the world space controls instead. And world space controls, as you remember, they just control the 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 angles between the bones and not the location of the bones. So the, just the local local space angles of each of each of each bone here and it copies also from the animation so i already prepared uh, a method that does this so instead of uh, enabling the world space controls called sk we are enabling uh, parent space controls and uh, then the rest is the same and we run it you see our character is now doing this so it's like uh, you know those rag dolls games and this is because the uh, this angle constraint alone is not strong enough to 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 keep it to keep the correct pose the the world space controls will uh, control both uh, world uh, position and rotation of these bones so if we for example here i created expose it some of those parameters if we reduce the the strength to the default value of 10 it will be very more fun and if we reduce this strength even more oops really have hard time to stay put now the uh, the feet are still kinematic so the whole body is still kept by the by the feet what will happen if we animate everything simulate everything and keep the rest as it is this will happen which is kind of fun and he, he flies like this because we have gravity multiplier to zero oh, let's put it to one and uh, somebody asked it on the on the previous video what will happen if you do this will it really walk because you know everything is simulated everything is colliding so maybe he will he will by playing this uh, animation really starting to walk forward what do you think no <laughs> not working and uh, i i found one case where it kind of works one animation which is called something idle uh, rifle this one so just person standing idle and this one previous time i tried walk it a little bit oops no this not works because those various those forces are too are too weak uh, but you see it keeps the overall overall pose so it behaves a little bit uh, like a, a static mesh in this pose which is fun i think Mm. 
maybe if I try another wall, it will work. Uh, no. <laughs> but you see, it's not really easy to <laughs> keep the equilibrium. And we can, of course, try to modify the, the dumping. I don't think it will help a lot, but... Yeah, so all this just to show how the uh, parent space control works. So now let's look at the next example, this one. This one combines the animation and procedural targets. So by default it's just the same walker as before. And we have to hit play to see. If we approach the trigger here, it starts to tremble like this. So it will play this trembling animation on top of the of the walk. Let's check it out. Here again make controls the same, creating two sets of controls and one set of um, body modifiers. Same things. It's the same thing in all those examples. Then we will uh, set up the 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 body modifier we will set everything but the fit to simulate it and the fit will be kinematic and then we will enable the world space controls so exactly like the previous example and so he will walk pulling by those strings world space controls and then we will also uh use the parent space controls here so we will take all the parent space controls controls between uh, the, the limbs and we will set the the uh, angular strength to something like 10 here and then uh, in the f and then we call the full animation to find the f to finish the setup. The full animation will disable the uh, parent controls and uh, uh, and uh, reset the multiplier of the of the world space controls to default values. So. And when we start, as we've seen, we have the world controls, world space controls enabled and uh, the other controls disabled. So we will we'll just just walk like before. And then uh, when we approach the trigger, we will go to another mode called shake. So it is set up here once when we activate the trigger. And then we just activate the uh, parent space controls. And we reduce a little bit the strength of the world controls. Okay. So uh, we will do the the animation of the shaking which is implemented in the tick so it's executed every time but when we are uh, outside of the trigger area it's just disabled and when we enter it enabled what it does it uh, uh, will create a random rotation and apply it as a target on the all parent space controls so all the limb will bend according to this number altogether and uh, there is a function creating this random rotation using c 
sinus function. Okay. And uh, it took me some time to understand, but <clears throat> it actually set the target to this number. And as you have seen already, it uh, just wall. It still walks. It just trembles a little bit. But the 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 rest of the movement is the is the same. And here it's written that it will. Uh, The, the world space controls are weakened and augmented with parent space controls. And and actually what I want to show, it was not really clear from the beginning for me, that those are applied on top of the animation so they are some sense they're additive because it's actually written here there is this checkbox that says that targets uh, the uh, animation will be used at, as target and it's written here that the target will be applied on on top of the skeletal animation if there is any so in this case it will be not rewriting the animation as we could imagine as I imagine it but it will be added to the to the animation this number and uh, yeah so it works like a additive and that's it for this example pretty simple now let's look at the Let's look at this guy. So this this one is uh, it's probably the most impressive of those examples. And uh, it's a guy who drives like this. As you can imagine, it's a it's a rag doll. So if you move it, it will move like that. And from time to time, it it uh, changed the gears how it's made uh, by default is playing an animation which is like this more or less all the time tick, tick, tick. like this it's looking down a little bit And uh, so from this we have to to recreate this. Keep the hands on the on the wheel and on the stick and the also if you can see it looks a little bit higher the head. So how it's done. Again, we create the chains of controls like before, same function. And then, as before, we put, put uh, we set everything to simulated except the feet. Same thing. We can actually try to put feet to simulated too. And then. Okay, let's put them back. Fit are fixed. Kinematic means uh, it will be exactly following the animation, but it will still interact with the rest of the bodies. So it will interact with the physics body connected to the feet, the, the shin and the thigh, the rest of the body. Then, once we did this, it will enable 
all the all the uh, parent space controls the angular controls between limbs and then for the uh, world space controls it, it will enable some of them that all the spine will be enabled the pelvis see pelvis zero that's the name of the world space control will be enabled here and its strength will be increased to 10 so the pelvis stays on the sitting on the on the chair then we will uh, adjust the the pelvis uh, strength by it will be stronger going up and down so it don't jump and a little bit weaker going side by side and front and back and those as i understand are in the world space so as you can see the characters should not jump too much but you can go a little bit forward to backward and a little bit more sideways then we do some adjustment for the head the head that does don't use the the vote space uh, control of the location only the, the rotation controlled by this and then we set here an offset for the head to minus 50 minus 50 on the head on the z it's like this so we put it a little bit higher and as i said before this will be kept always minus 50 because we set it once and it will be added to the to the value coming from the animation as it explained up here that took me some time to understand it will not rewrite the animation and then that's all for the for the for the body itself so if we remove this part that controls the hands we will have this guy sitting here and dolling but not touching the the wheel now for the wheel there are another set of controls two controls for the for grabbing the wheel and one control for for grabbing the stick the control for grabbing the wheel it it's between the wheel which is actually here uh, this thing where are you this mesh and uh, and the hand and here we set some strengths to 40 and here we say that it doesn't use skeletal animation so those hands will just stay where they are controlled by the the more or less by what comes from here so from here as we seen only the uh, uh, parent space controls came for the world space controls only the spine and the and the and the head are used And uh, we will set the position, the target of the hand, as uh, not like the uh, position uh, of the wheel itself, because it will be in the center of the wheel, but like the relative uh, location orientation of this thing. 
and this thing if you look here is this little locator located on the on the wheel to which will which will move with the wheel so we'll take this position of the the sting and we will when we rotate the wheel root it will rotate with it and we put the hand on here and the other hand on the on here Wait. So that will be our target. And this target will remain the same all the time. The wheel itself will move and then move these two things. And then the same for the other hand. And then for the the stick, we create another control from the hand to the stick. So we create on the same time those two but they will be not used on the same time and this between the stick and the right hand the same there are some strengths and animation disabled and there is also an object that indicates the where we grab it the stick that moves to together with the stick and there is another thing here will specify the control point so uh, we what is the control point is the offset from the if you want from the hand bone so the hand will touch the the this object at this not at the origin not at the hand bone but at the hand bone minus 10 in the hand space which is something like this Oops. this is the hand bone this is the x axis so it will go on minus 10 so it will go a little bit here and we will grab the stick in by the, the by the middle of the palm right minus 10 and 4 so we'll grab it a little bit in the middle of the on the hand and that's it that's all the setup this is done once and then on tick we will uh, do different things here we rotate the wheel so we will rotate the steer we will rotate the uh, wheel using this using this uh, noise left and right and uh, as we seen here we uh, constrained our hand with the wheel mesh at this location initial so when we rotate the wheel it will go to there when you see the, the those two do, are not really parent to the wheel but it's just the relative location at the beginning that counts it will keep the same relative location of the hand after that the wheel rotated and then so this way the 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 hands stay on the wheel just did nothing else and then here we shake the car well in this case i don't really use it because i'm simulating so i shake the car like this but it's a function that does the same procedurally using again the perlin noise and uh, here is the part that changes from the wheel the right the right arm from the wheel to the stick 
we can see there is a timeline which like a, where uh, that's actually controlling the strengths of the of the two controls stick control and right hand wheel control and sometimes the strength of the stick is one the rest of the time is zero and the strength of the of the wheel is the opposite and there is also another timeline that is controlling the position of the of the stick forward and backward so when we play, play this we play it by providing time modulo 10 and uh, at each tick we will update the strengths of the stick control and the strengths of the wheel grab control which as we seen are opposite yeah, both are enabled but the strength is either zero here and one here either one here and zero here or something in between but never one on the both and this is the thing that rotates the stick forward front and back yeah, so that all and we have this wonderful thing set up like this <laughs>